Welcome back students to chapter 5 video notes for chemistry 1510. Um, we're going to talk about effusion and diffusion today. So diffusion and effusion uh, have some similar sounding words but they're actually quite different from one another. Before we get into them let's remind ourselves that from the kinetic molecular theory we just discussed how the average speed of your molecules is going to be dependent upon temperature. So diffusion and effusion are definitely going to be uh, temperature based. So let's talk about what each of them is. Diffusion is something that you are pretty used to. Diffusion is when you make cookies in your house and uh, your siblings can smell them from the basement and so they come upstairs and eat your cookies. It's when you walk into a hallway and you can smell someone's perfume that just walked through. Uh, it's when you are in the chemistry lab and somebody uh, opens a container of hexane and then all of a sudden on the other side of the room you think, oh my gosh, what's that overwhelming smell? Right, so diffusion is when you have a gas moving from one area to another area um, so that the pressure ends up equaling out or the partial pressure. Effusion is a little bit different and this one has some calculations that go with it. So let's draw a picture of what effusion looks like. Effusion is best described if you have a container, and usually when we describe the container, it's a box, and the box has gas particles in it, and then your effusion rate is how those gas molecules are moving through a small opening in the box. And so we can look at effusion rate as an equation where it'll be equivalent to some constant divided by the square root of the molar mass of the gas molecules. And so we normally use this to compare two gases because otherwise it gets a little bit confusing about where to get that K from. And so if we're comparing two gases, we can take the effusion rate of one gas, which we'll call A, and compare that to the effusion rate of a second gas, which we'll call B. And this will be equivalent to the molar mass of B divided by the molar mass of A and taking a square root of that whole darn thing. Um, so the flip of this can also be true. And let's just take a moment to recognize that mathematically, this is the same as if you were to write the effusion rate of A versus the effusion rate of B and then put the molar mass of A with a square root on the bottom versus a molar mass of B and a square root on the top, right? So that's, this is mathematically the same thing. So I just want to show it to you both ways because uh, you might use one versus the other um, in a different problems. So let's look at two effusion rate examples. So for this first one, it says what is the ratio of effusion rates of N2 and O2 in the same conditions, right? Same conditions just means they're at the same temperature, right? So we don't have to worry about a temperature change. So if we're looking at the effusion rate of N2 versus O2, you could call either one of these A or B. What most people tend to do is they end up putting the smaller um, mass as A because it ends up getting them a whole number. And then it's just easier to understand. But you could do it the other way as well. So we're going to call the effusion rate of N2 R A and have that on top versus the effusion rate of O2. So the molar mass of oxygen because it's diatomic is 32 grams per mole. 
and the effusion, or I'm sorry, not the effusion rate, the molar mass of nitrogen, because again, it's diatomic, is 28 grams per mole. And so when you carry this out, you're going to get this ratio of the effusion rate of nitrogen to the effusion rate of oxygen being just over 1, so 1 1.069. So what does this number even mean? So what some, some of the time what you'll see people do is you'll see people multiply both sides by the effusion rate of oxygen. The reason for this is now we can say the effusion rate of nitrogen is 1.069 times faster than the effusion rate of oxygen. Right? So that's what this means. So effusion rate of nitrogen is 1.069 times faster. than the effusion rate of oxygen. So that one's a pretty typical kind of straightforward problem that we'll see. The other type of problem that we'll see is a little bit more complex. So in this one, they're giving you the effusion rate of the two gases, and they're telling you that the lighter gas is hydrogen and asking what's the identity of the other gas. So because we have the effusion rate being greater than 1, what that means is the uh, smaller gas, again, is on top. Right? The way that I know that is if I come back up to this example, see how 32 divided by 28 is always going to get you something greater than 1, even if you're taking the square root of it. So. Uh, that means that the lighter gas needs to be on the bottom in the, the uh, numerical side of the problem. So the lighter gas is on the top over here. So hydrogen is our lightest gas, and so that's how I know to put the hydrogen on the top. And then the effusion rate of the unknown gas is on the bottom. So what we're saying is that the effusion rate of hydrogen versus the effusion rate of an unknown gas is 5.93. And so when we calculate this, we need to say that the 5.93 is equivalent to the molar mass of the unknown divided by the molar mass of the hydrogen and the square root of that number. So we can plug in a couple of things here. First, let's start with the idea that we know what the molar mass of hydrogen is. So the molar mass of hydrogen is about two grams per mole. We don't know what the molar mass of the unknown gas is. And now let's go back to math class. We need to get rid of that square root. So how do you get rid of a square root? Oh, that's right. You square it. So we square that and we square that. So the squared gets rid of the square root. So now we have 5.93 squared is equivalent to the molar mass of the unknown divided by the 2 grams per mole. So now let's get that molar mass of the unknown alone. So as we go through and do that, we're going to multiply both sides by 2. And now we have 2.00 times 5.93 squared equals the molar mass of the unknown. When you go through all of that, and you put that into your calculator, the molar mass of your unknown is 70.3 grams per mole. So now the question becomes, how do you figure out from the molar mass what the identity of the gas is? So this takes a moment. What you need to do is look at a periodic table that tells you what the things are that are commonly gases and start there. 
So you look at hydrogen, you come over here, you look at helium, then uh, there's you know nitrogen, there's oxygen, there's fluorine, there's chlorine, right, and so on. And so you look at the molar masses individually first, and none of them match up with uh, the molar mass of 70.3 grams per mole. So then you start considering the fact that nitrogen, oxygen, chlorine, fluorine are all diatomic, and you start mentally doubling those and see if you get anything that matches. So what I want to do is leave it up to you to identify that gas, and we will talk about that thought process a little bit more in class to make sure you have it down pat. So I will see you in class. As always, thank you for your attention, and good luck finding out the identity of that gas. This is Katoni signing out.